everyone. Welcome to the Smooth On Mold Making Casting Live presentation on gold leafing your castings. My name is Kevin and I've been a painter and illustrator for over 35 years and a part of the Smooth On team here for a good part of that. Uh, today I'm joined by Jason, our moderator. You may hear another voice. Hello. And feel free to uh, use the chat to ask questions. Um, try to submit some, uh, you know, hopefully we'll get your answers. So submit some questions. Uh, if we don't get to yours, uh, then submit a ticket using the link to our customer service support page uh, in the video description. Today, um, what we'll be covering is gold leafing. What is gold leafing? Um, why would you use gold leaf? Um, supplies used to gold leaf. Benefits of using black castings uh, for gold leafing. So there's a big benefit there. Um, release agents. Should you use one? Should you not use one? Um, the work area that you're working in to do gold leaf. One thing you ha is real important. Um, clear coats after you're done with the gold leaf. Do you need to do it? Should you do it? So um, with that said, uh, let's just jump right in. Um, and we're going to talk about materials and uh, smooth cast onyx. And there's two speeds. There's a smooth cast onyx fast and a slow. Um, we have a polymer modified gypsum product. It's called Duo Matrix Neo. Uh, touch a little bit on smooth cast 320, which is another urethane resin. Um, and crystal clear, which is a UV resistant clear urethane resin. So um, there's some of the materials we're going to go over today. Um, what is gold leafing? It is the process of layering thin sheets of gold over a surface for a decorative and protective look or finish. Um, gold leafing goes back five to 6,000 years. So it's a very old process. And uh, so we're going to learn the basics today. Um, it comes in different carats, um, 22 to 24 carat gold. Um, pure gold is 24 carat. A real yellow gold leaf is 91.7% pure, and that's a 22 carat. Uh, we're going to be working with the 23 carat today. Um, you probably heard the term uh, metal leaf. Well. Metal leaf refers to other metals. That's a similar process, very thin, but it doesn't have gold in it. So uh, there is also a silver colored white gold. You've heard of white gold. That's 50% pure gold. We're not going to work with that either today. Um, so layering gold leaf onto a surface uh, is also referred to as gilding. So uh, uh, we're going to be doing that today. We're going to have these little sheets in a loose leaf. Um, they're about three and an eight diameter um, uh, square and uh, very thin. There's 25 sheets in there and uh, it's gold, so it can get a little expensive. Um, a book like that could go for 40 or $50, so depending on the gold prices. So um, another process uh, that's done commonly is the frames. So what we have here is some gold frames, uh, gilded uh, frames. This is done on our onyx, which is that black urethane resin. You don't have to color this resin, so you, you, it's a one-to-one -one by volume, and you mix that, you pour that, and it'll cure black. And we'll go over why black castings are good. Um, I have some other pieces here I'd just like to show you. We uh, have this gold bar, and uh, this is just gold leaf. Um, this is on the onyx uh, the black urethane, so we, we went over that. Um, I have a neat little piece here. This was done on a previous video, if you look on the Smooth On website, uh, this medical symbol, and this was done on Onyx also. And, uh, you know, people can do this and apply this to a sign. There's a lot of different applications. Mm -hmm. uh, signage mm -hmm. is very popular. And you can see in this mold, this was a uh, a tin cured mold. This is our 29 NV Mold Max series. And this is onyx that was casted into this piece. So, uh, you know, I could just show quickly. I'll just kind of demold this. And y you can see, you can see that onyx piece. 
So uh, it's kind of a neat thing. It picks up all that detail. So uh, let me just move this out of the way here. And this piece also. What we have here is a trophy. It's a gold leaf trophy. So just kind of a neat thing um, that you can do this on three-dimensional pieces, not just a, a flatter surface. So it's a little tricky. Uh, like anything, a little practice, you get better at it. Um, we have a couple other frames here. It's another frame that was done. And here was the onyx casting. So uh, it's kind of a neat piece. And that was done in a mold, a 29 MV mold also. And this piece, a little bit bigger, uh, similar to the smaller piece here with the decorative edge. Um, so that was gold leaf also. So yeah, frames are very popular. Um, so uh, a neat thing is some small items. So uh, you can even have a, here's a very small frame. And uh, so he was a black casting. Now this particular casting material, I've been talking about onyx, but, but this material right here is actually our duo matrix Neo. So it's a 2A to 1B. It's a, a powder and, and a liquid. And we added our carbon black Buddy Rhodes uh, powder to, to blacken that. So uh, that's kind of a neat option that you can have too with the Neo. Um, so that's kind of a cool piece. Some small things, uh, jewelry that people can do. So here's a little bear claw necklace. So you might want to do a necklace and put that on. You know, that's kind of a neat little piece. Um, also have this turtle. And uh, I'll just show you a couple of the castings here so you get an idea of some casting material. Um, this particular one is our onyx, onyx fast, the uh, urethane resin that cures black. This is the Neo that's been colored, the carbon black. So that came out well. Uh, this is the Neo without coloring it, so you get an idea. This is uh, how it originally comes out without coloring it. Now this is a um, Neo casting, and uh, what I did is I applied sizing, which is your adhesive for gold leaf, just to certain areas on here that I wanted the gold to bond to. And uh, yeah, kind of a neat effect, so it worked out well. And uh, I'll put these over here. And I also have a bust here of Abraham Lincoln. And, and you can see that. And here's one of the black castings. So uh, kind of a neat thing. It, it really works well. So uh, here's a rock. I, I did a, a mold casted. Here's the uh, Neo. And here's gold leaf. So uh, you were panning for gold and you found that, that would be a, a lucky day. Um, there's another material. Um, and you can see that right here, that the uh, that gold really pops. And, and the beauty of the clear resin is uh, you have that light that can come through it. Now, uh, you know, these are a lot of smaller items. Um, we have a, uh, a video here of a uh, Buddha that's 8 to 10 feet tall that was done in a crystal clear 206. And uh, that's a very large casting. And uh, gold leaf was applied to that and had a really neat effect. And, uh, you know, we have that in our entrance to our seminar area. If you ever visit Smoothie and take that seminar, you would see that. And the light, we have lights coming through. That's a really neat effect. So uh, that's our crystal clear 206, I believe, that was used for that. There are a bunch in that series for, for different thicknesses. Um, so uh, I'm going to move on now to uh, why would you use gold leaf? Um, so there are multiple uses. I mentioned frames. A lot of people do frames. Um, art, some uh, these small objects, uh, jewelry. Um, signage is very popular. 
a, a lot of sign makers we use gold leaf and uh, gold leaf actually even for exterior will last many many years so um, it, it's it's a really good material um, you have that luster with gold leaf I mean uh, it, it just looks great um, now I mentioned the art uh, there's a famous painter from Austria called Gustav Klimt and uh, he incorporated uh, gold leaf into his paintings and he's very well known for that and they're really nice paintings uh, it's something I, I'm a painter I want to incorporate a little gold leaf in a piece so I'm now I'm really thinking about that um, I also want to mention gold paint. Some people may say, well, I'll just get gold paint. I'll just use gold paint. It looks just as good. It, it doesn't look just as good. It, it, it's, you can get some really good gold paint that looks pretty well, but against real gold leaf, it doesn't have that luster of real gold. And, and you can see that. Um, that. That really stands out, you know, um, that luster. So uh, it, it's a big difference, actually. Um, that's why people love the gold, gold leaf, the real gold leaf. So uh, that's kind of a neat thing. Um, you know, I'm going to mention the um, gold leaf on some resin. I'm going to show you a piece here. This is a, an oval decorative piece. And uh, this was um, done with our onyx into the mold and actually I have the mold here to show you real quickly this mold here so what I did is just mix and pour in here and uh, it came out really well and then I decided to gold leaf the figure and I thought it had a very neat effect so uh, it showed up very well um, kind of a neat neat looking piece that really pops against that black background so, uh, so you, yeah, I just applied sizing to the areas that I wanted the gold to bond to, and, uh, and it worked out well, you know, it, it kind of a neat effect. Uh, I tried something else a little different just with the uh, um, Duo Matrix Neo. I tried casting in here, and just kind of a different piece, just to show you real quick. Um, I, I darkened the Neo, and I put it just where the figure was. And um, when that's set, I just used a regular Neo without coloring that, and uh, just kind of a neat effect for the Neo. It's, it's a neat product, so uh, if you ever, you know, think about using a new product, you may want to try that. It's, it's, it's kind of a neat product. Um, so, put this down. So, we talked about why use gold leaf? Um, so now I'd like to discuss, I mentioned earlier, about your work area. So gold leaf is very thin. It's super thin. So if you're working in an area where you have a vent blowing on you, a fan, uh, it's going to be a big problem because that, that gold leaf is going to fold over. You're going to be wasting a lot of gold. Um, even your breath can fold that over. So you just have to be aware of that. And, uh, you know, to, like, the more you do that, uh, you'll get better at it. So uh, it's like practice, like anything. So the, the more you practice, the better you get. So and be aware of that. Um, I also want to cover release agents. I, I did a YouTube Live video talking about painting and uh, release agents on your castings. And it's very similar here. You're going to be putting uh, an adhesive onto your casting. And then you're going to put the gold on top of that. And when you do that, you know, you want that to bond. Well, if you have a release agent on there, that's going to be a problem. So, you know, if you can use a silicone mold for your castings, you don't need a release agent. Um, if you do have a release agent that is on that surface, um, you're going to have to clean that off. So you may have to use soap and water, a mild solvent such as isopropyl alcohol. Um, I've heard of some customers... I'm actually having to sandblast the pieces to get that off. So uh, bottom line, if you don't need to, don't use a release agent when you're doing your castings if you know you're going to be doing gold leaf. Um, so uh, that's a smart thing to do. So uh, you can increase your post work if you do that, and you don't want that. So, uh, so now I'm going to talk about some supplies. So um, gold leaf, 
outcome actually is. You need the goal. So uh, what we have here is this Minetti, and uh, you can get these this gold leaf. And in this, we what we have is booklets. And I'll show you right here. The booklet, this has uh, 25 sheets of gold leaf in here. And it's very, very, very thin. So I'll show you. I'll try to get a little just to show you here. You can see that. So it's you have to be very careful when you're using that. So that's our gold. Uh, this is a gilder's tip brush. Now, you would use this brush to get that gold off of that sheet or when you're applying that onto a piece. And uh, what you can do is something called charging. And charging is where you wipe it against your skin, your arm, your forehead, um, and you pick up a little of the oil from your skin. And that will help um, grab onto that gold. Um, but then when you bring that over a piece that has the adhesive, the sizing on it, it'll bond right to that uh, adhesive. So. This is a real important brush that you need when you're gold leafing. Um, we have a couple other items here. Um, what we have is the sizing I want to mention. Um, there is the sizing. This is our adhesive. And this is an hour wait time or a little under an hour. And then you're ready to um, gold leaf. Now, you can gold leaf up to about three hours with this. And this is what I've used. Um, there is other ones that some people use, but they're um, a 12-hour. There's one that's a 12-hour, uh, Charbonnel. Um, I, that's just too long for me to time that for 12 hours. So uh, that's why I'm using this. And uh, another important thing is kaolin powder. It's this white powder, and this is where I mentioned the black castings. And we're going to apply that onto a black casting and uh, dust it off. And uh, then when you apply the, apply the sizing to that um, mold, uh, to that casting, you'll see the visual difference. And uh, what you want to do is ensure that you're getting complete coverage of your um, uh, sizing, which is your adhesive. If you don't, uh, and then you apply that gold, you can have gaps in those areas, and it won't look very, very good. So uh, uh, that's very important. I'll do a little demonstration on that. And um, well, we have some of the brushes here. Now, this is just a, a brush to powder it. Um, we have what's called a gilder's knife. And uh, this is the gilder's pad. So what will happen is we'll be putting gold down on the surface of the casting, and uh, a lot of times you'll have little areas that you may miss, and there'll be little gaps. So what you'll do is take that gold, and you put that on the gold, the gilder's pad, and then you cut that into smaller pieces, and then you apply that to those little gaps. So I'll show you that today also. Uh, here's the mop brush. Uh, these two brushes, the gilder's tip and the mop, are the ones I really like to use. Uh, this is at the very end, so. Um, what you'll do is once you get all your gold on and you get your, your coverage, you would use a, a smaller brush, like a skew, excuse me, <clears throat> skewing brush, and um, you can get pressed down on the gold that's on that casting in, into little crevices around the edges, and then you can apply or use the mop brush, and uh, you go over the whole surface. And that, that looks, when you do that, it looks really Cool, you know, the gold really shows up. So that's what we'll be doing. So um, what I'm going to do here is just show you with the powder right now. Hey, Kevin. Yes. Um, does the color of the resin or what you're putting the gold leaf on, does that affect the look of the gold leaf? No, it won't affect. You could do it. Um, the question was the color of the casting. Will it affect the gold leaf? And it won't. Um, I've heard of some people that want a similar color because it won't pop through. Um, you could do that, but then you may not get full coverage because you want to use the kaolin powder and then use the sizing to visually know you have all the, the areas covered. So if you use, say, a light color, 
um, we actually have a, uh, there's a piece right here that I'm going to be showing. Um, this is our smooth cast 320, and this is an off-white resin. And I'm going to actually sh show a demo here of the kaolin powder on this piece and on a black resin casting. This is our onyx. And uh, you will see the difference, and, um, and it's very apparent, you know, um, that you want to get that full coverage. So I'm just going to open up this container right here and uh, apply some of this. Take this one brush here. So I'm just going to do a section over here just to show you. And you're going to see the, you obviously see that difference here. So you want to get that in all those nooks and crannies. Really show that. And then you could blow this off or shake this off. Mostly on the top here as an example. Now what I'm going to do is, you'll see this right here, I'm going to brush this on this surface. And uh, you'll see. It's very hard, difficult to see that you're getting the coverage on there. So that's, I, I wouldn't even waste my time doing that. You, you can see that. It's very hard to distinguish if you have that completely covered. You'd have to look at the, you know, in the lighting at different angles trying to see that. So I, I wouldn't even bother with that. That would be too difficult. Um, so that kind of answers that question too, Jason. Um, Load that off there. And uh, so you would do this over the entire casting. And uh, then what you would do is apply your sizing, which is your adhesive. So I have the one shot adhesive. And uh, I have some in a container already here, a little cup. So it's a little amber colored material. And then I'm going to take a brush here, I have a brush for applying this. And uh, I'm going to just take a little bit here, and uh, you'll see the, the difference. So right here, you really see a big difference, you know, so when you apply that. So you know you're getting that full coverage of this uh, sizing on here. This is your adhesive. It's very important. If you don't get that on there, that gold's not going to bond to it. So uh, you don't want it too thick, so you can thin that out a little bit, go over that. Because if it's lumpy, that's going to show up in the gold. It won't look as smooth. Now in here, we want to get in all this detail. And this is on an onyx piece, so uh, it's a urethane plastic, uh, urethane resin. And uh, but you could do this on the Duo Matrix Neo. Um, and like I said, this onyx is a one-to-one -one by volume, and there's a fast and a slow. So uh, the fast is a two-and-a-half-minute pot life, and I think that cures in 10 or 15 minutes. So uh, that's great for a smaller piece like this. If you're doing a larger piece, the Onyx Slow, I think has a five minute pot life, and I think it's a 90 minute cure. So if you're doing a bigger frame, and you didn't have time to mix and pour that, um, you know, with the, with the fast, you get the slow. That's gonna give you a little more time. And uh, you can get that mix and pour it into that mold to make that casting. So th this really shows you visually the big difference that you can tell, this is your adhesive. So if you didn't get this completely covered and you're trying to apply gold on that, it's not going to bond to it. So um, that would be an issue.
So uh, uh, this is a good illustration. Now, you know what? I just put a little of that powder the, the, onto this. Uh, and I'm going to just show you a little difference here, too. It's very difficult to see. side there. Now if I'm going to apply sizing to this, how well visually are you going to see that? Are you going to be sure that you got it all covered? Well, I can see the color, the amber color, but um, it's still kind of difficult, especially going over these nooks and crannies to know if you would get that covered. I mean, you, you can just see that difference right here. So that's why black castings are very important. Um, what you want to do is really get that covered. Otherwise, the gold won't bond to it. It's very simple, you know? So let me put these aside here. And that's an example of using the kaolin powder. And... Uh, with the sizing, so uh, very important. Put that down, and uh, have a little isopropyl alcohol here. I'm going to put my brush in, just so I don't ruin the brush. Okay, put this down here, and uh, all right. So that's kind of a uh, you're preparing that piece. So if you put that sizing on, like I was just showing you. And that's the one shot that's going to take about an hour or just under an hour. And um, then you're ready to put the gold on there. So I'm going to move right on to the gold here. And I'm just going to put a new sheet here right in front just so I can see this well. And what I have is a... piece like I had mentioned before that I'd had previously done and uh, I just want to show you the, fr the frames here too this is a similar frame this is the uh, duo matrix neo which is uncolored so that's the color you're going to get when you mix that and uh, like I said that's a 2a to 1b by volume and then for the colorant I added Buddy Rhodes carbon black it's a powder and I added 1% you want to add to that. And uh, so that gave me, it to, it's more of a matte look, but uh, you can see that uh, you know, nice castings. It really worked out well. So uh, keep in mind the Duo Matrix Neo, kind of a neat product. All right, so what I'm going to do is get into the gold leafing. So I'm going to take my pad over here that over here, my gilder's tip. And uh, now what I'm going to do is get, um, uh, what I'm going to try here without putting it on the pad is apply it right here to the surface of the casting. And uh, then like I said, I could go back and do smaller areas. I can cut it on the gilder's pad. So uh, try to get just pull in these pages on here. You got to go a little slow. That's the gold. And I'll take this. And I'll just charge this maybe a little on my forehead. And then what I'm going to do is try to get this. Just touch it a little bit there. I'll have to come back to that. another sheet. Charge it a little bit. And a lot of times with pieces, if they they're, uh, have little raised areas, um, you know, you get little bridges. And uh, there is a tool that uh, this round sable, you could actually press this down to try to get it in it, and that helps. 
try to get it. Now, you can see it cracks in certain areas, and that's where you're going to have to come back. So uh, it's kind of a neat thing. Um, different tools, different brushes. Take another sheet here. Charge this. You, what you want to do is really cover this as completely as you can. And like I said, you, don't, you want to avoid using that mop brush at the very end as like uh, your, your backup just to fill in large areas. It's really just for really minute areas. So uh, keep that in mind. Probably one more sheet, two more sheets here. I'm only going to do, uh, I'm not going to do this entire frame. I'm just, I, I wanted to leave certain areas open to show you. You can see the difference there. The original casting, the black onyx, kaolone powder, and here's some sizing. So you, you can really see the difference there. So charge this. And you're going to have excess, and, uh, you know, you can actually pick that up. Uh, I try to. I mean, gold's expensive. You can try to uh, reuse that. Speaking of that, Kevin, that uh, booklet that okay. you have there, Okay. how much would you estimate a booklet like A booklet that like this is a loose leaf. There's 25 sheets. And uh, it would probably go for about 40 or $50, depending on the price of gold. So, um, you know, it's gold. It can get expensive, you know. So uh, the bigger pieces you're doing. Um, you know what I'm going to do? I'm going to start cutting this because I know I have some on the side here that you can see. So uh, what I'm going to do is put this on the gilder's pad now and show you that. So I charged it, and now I'm just going to lightly hold that. Sometimes it grabs at a little bit more than I wanted it to. Use that right there. And you can see it. Sometimes when you charge that, it grabs it a little too much. But you can see how thin this is. So what I'm going to do is just cut this in a couple different lengths here and uh, maybe try to do a little on that side of the frame just to show you. So lightly charge this and then what I'm going to do is show you. I'll try to pick up just this oops it's a little tricky like I said it's very in there. Whoops. Got to charge that. I said you have to be, it's very delicate, so um, just take your time. I'm going to need a little bit more in there. I'm going to do another sheet here. Actually, what I have. here. Put another sheet on here. So Kevin, if you get the fold over of okay. the gold, right, if the sheet folds over on itself, can, can you unfold it or is it kind of 
Yeah, the, 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 the question is if the gold folds over, um, can you unfold it? Sometimes a little bit you can. Um, you got to be really careful. A lot of times you can't, you know. So that's why it's important because gold's expensive. So, uh, you know, just be as careful as you can. So I'm going to charge that. I think I charged it too much. There we go. I was able to get that off. So now I'm going to cut this. little wider strips here and uh, to try to get a better yeah. as you see it can be very tricky yeah. that didn't work out the best let's see here I'm going to try to press this down a little bit See what I have here? Is there some loose? What I'm going to do too now is actually cut this in some smaller little areas here. Kevin, is that Gilder's knife uh, serrated or is it just a really sharp the, blade? The Gilder's knife is not serrated. Um, they can get dull. It, you're cutting metal. So um, it's recommended uh, using ceramic sharpener and to sharpen that up. And, uh, you know, I, I, if you do in this uh, sawing motion, though, it seems to cut it better, you know. So uh, that's something that, uh, yeah, I have two knives. One of them got a little dull, so I'm using the better knife right now. So I'm going to charge this, and uh, I'll show you picking up. A smaller piece here, so I can try to get that in there. Apply that there. Here. I'm going to show you on this surface. I'm going to press this down a little bit and see what I have here. Very gently. You know, probably get small gaps, but I'm also going to do a little demonstration, a little bit about these casting materials, uh, and just show you how easy they are to make those castings. So. So that looks pretty good. Let me let me fill in a couple of these spots right here, and uh, before I use that mop brush, so uh, I can even take some gold from here. I have some overlap. Put that in there. So more overlap here. It's a kind of a delicate way to work, but you have to. It's so thin. Um, I just want to show, well, I got a couple pieces here. Let me use these right here. Spot right there. There's a spot right here. I want to show you how to use the mop brush right now. Um, you know, this with a skew brush too, right here on the edge. First, let me show you that, just to try to. Okay, I'm going to use the mop brush now. Now, I'm just, just doing this corner, too. So you do this over the entire piece. So this, you just kind of loosely brush this over. And I'll probably see some gaps um, that hopefully 
it'll fill in a little bit. Just brush it very lightly. I'm going a little of a circular motion here in this, this corner, trying to get everything in. And uh, the gold that didn't bond, you'll have a little flakes that will fill in those little areas. So uh, see that. So Kevin, this brush isn't a, a paint brush, it's a specialized... It's a specialized, these brushes, this is a mop brush, um, it's uh, specialized for gold leaf, as is this brush, the gilder's tip, which is very important. Um, there are, you know, some brushes that, uh, like the skew brush um, and uh, some flat brushes, so I was using one of these flats uh, just to get the smaller pieces, and uh, like I said, the key here is to get as much coverage as you can. You don't want to depend on the mop brush and uh, try to cover it as, as well as you can with the gold. So, uh, and I'll just get this, this. I didn't do this whole side, but this I kind of tried to get more of that side. So I would brush that in there. Now I've noticed doing the gold leaf on the onyx as well as the duo matrix neo, they both work really well. So that's kind of, you do have a little excess here and uh, you can save that up. Just try to, but basically that is how you do gold leafing, and uh, that's why it's good on black casting. I am going to do a uh, little demos here on some of the casting material also, and another small piece of gold leaf. So uh, let me just show you that. So that, that really shows you the difference here. Here's your onyx casting with the kaolin powder, and uh, here's the gold leaf applied to that. So uh, it really has a great sheen to it. Um, that you can't really replicate with the gold spray paint. So uh, just put this aside here. Now I just want to show you a little demo here with the um, some of the resin. So uh, just put this aside. I'm going to be using this again. Let me just this. Whoops. I'll just move this over here. A little gold leaf here. All right. What I want to show you now is what we have is this one smaller mold that I use for this frame. Um, and it, this is our silicone mold. It's a uh, Mold Star 30. And uh, it's a great product, a 1A to 1B. Um, I made this mold a while ago. So what I have here now is a pre-dispensed material because it's a 1A to 1B. Let me grab that. Some gloves on here. So the, the beauty of this material, and that's what I did the gold leafing on, is that it cures black. So it's easy to use, and uh, you don't even have to color it. So uh, what I'll do here is mix this. Hey, Kevin. Yep. You would never apply more sizing 
to spots you would miss, would you? Actually, that's a good point. Would you apply sizing to areas you mixed? Yes, you can. Um, so sometimes if the sizing uh, is older, um, I think what can happen is it, it just doesn't bond very good to those areas, and you may have to put a little on. I, I've done that before, too. You, you really don't want to. It's going to kind of lose that nice, smooth effect. So uh, it's something to keep in mind. So let's see here. Do this quickly. This is uh, our fast. So let's see. So I mix this up, scrape the sides and the bottom. And like I said, this, I really don't have time to do a, a double mix on this. So this is just a well mixed, one mix. And I'll just pour this into this mold in the lowest spot. Let that gradually fill up. And like I said, if you had a bigger mold, the onyx slow would be a better material to use. Just going to have to pour that. That's, I don't know if this table is completely level. So I'm noticing that. Slowly try to move this a little. Maybe a little difficult. Or a little in this corner. Actually, I'm not. That is starting to set. That material is already setting. So uh, very fast. Two and a half minute pot life, about a 10 minute cure. So I'm just going to kind of push this to the side a little. It's already set in there. You can see that. All right, so let's see here. So now that is the onyx. That's the onyx fast, and uh, that was used for this frame also. So uh, great material. Uh, now what we're going to do is do a casting with the Duo Matrix Neo. And I have a small mold here, and this is of this Lincoln head. And um, so what I'm going to do is put this in a cup. It's a glove mold. It's a one-piece mold with a um, bandage uh, two-piece support shell, just hold, holding it together with a rubber band. And what I'll do is put this in a cup here just to hold this level. And this is going to take uh, a little longer to cure. I think this is like an, an hour cure. And uh, I think I have about five minutes to work with this material. So I want to show you it's uh, two to one. So you have two parts of your A, which is your powder. One part liquid. And then because that's white, we added 1% of the Buddy Rhodes carbon black powder. And uh, so I'm going to mix that into a cup here. And first, I am going to scrape out any of this. I'm going to add the liquid into a bigger cup here. I want to color the liquid with the powder. You get a better, better color, better mix. So I'm going to put that in right now. Just get that in there. And then it's best to use a drill mixer. So what I'm going to do is make sure this is on really tight. Now, when you're mixing, you really want to hold that cup very firmly. OK? So uh, Just 
So you get that mixed into your, your liquid, that's your colorant. And then I'm going to add some powder. Now I'm going to add one first and then mix this. And then I'll add that second. Hold that cup very firmly. Okay, that wasn't supposed to happen. Um, so what I'll do is just mix this by hand. Fortunately, ah. Yeah. At least that color was really mixed in well. So now I really gonna mix this really well. Take the sides. Scrape the sides, the bottom. Really get that mixed as well as I can. Yeah, that tip wasn't supposed to come off like that, but this will still work. That's pretty good. So now I'm going to pour this into this mold. Make sure that's level. Looks pretty good. So here we go. Just let that gradually fill up in here. This Neo, it's a water resistant. It's good for outdoors. Um, you know, especially, you know, I'm doing this little bust, but if you did some of those frames, I mean, years ago, a lot of frames were made with plastic. So the, this is a polymer modified gypsum. It's very strong. It's a uh, really good material. So there we go. Okay. Now, this will take about an hour to cure. So I'm just going to put that as. And I'm going to do this whole piece where I showed you before I selected certain areas. So I'm trying to get this completely covered. So uh, and that actually did a pretty good job. So I'm not going to waste a whole sheath doing each leg on here. So I'm going to cut this. see that folded a little bit there. I'll try to save that. There we go. Now I'm going to cut this with the gilder's knife. Remember to keep that knife sharp, too, because that can get dull. That happened to me. So I'm going to use a smaller 
brush here. I'm going to charge this. Get it on these legs. There's the head. The turtle. You just have to move kind of slow here and get used to this. To finish doing this leg here. And do the back leg. And actually with your castings too, if they're glossy, uh, the surface, it's better for the gold leaf too. You'll get that ni nice smooth finish. Okay, let's see. I'm going to cut this in two other little pieces here. Charge that. See you over there. It's hard to tell here all the way around. I think I need just a couple little pieces to try to cover this. So let's see here. Keep those questions coming in. If you have any other questions, it's kind of fun doing this. I, I really want to incorporate this in a painting. I don't know how yet, but uh, I'll figure something out. So you cut those, charge this. Now I'm gonna have to pick this up a little. I can't really see all the areas. an area right there. Is it easier on a three-dimensional piece to do these small pieces than to try and do one? Uh, the, you can cover it easier, uh, but flatter surfaces are easier, you know. Um, the, uh, the nooks and crannies on a three-dimensional piece kind of make it tricky, you know. Um, and if you have those uh, little little valleys in there when the gold creates a bridge. Um, I mentioned that before, that um, you try to press that down, but that can create little open areas where you don't have any gold, so you gotta look at that. So I'm just gonna try to apply that there. See any areas that I'm missing. And then what I'll do is use that skewing or one of the flats to press it down in certain areas and just try to get that complete coverage. I had a good question here about when the sizing, the size starts to dry. Okay. Does it thicken as it dries or stay as thin as it was to begin with? The question really is over time, do you lose that flat surface as the size starts to dry on you? Um, yeah, you you can use lose a little of that uh, surface. Um, it uh, it'll still stay pretty smooth, uh, but if it dries, uh, the gold won't bond. And that's where you had an earlier question: Can you touch up certain areas and put the sizing on? And you can. Um, it doesn't look as good. If you can do it the first time, that's always the best. So uh, let's see, that looks pretty good. You see on the surface here, in a couple areas. All right, now, so I'll take that 
other brush and I'm just going to press down a couple areas just try to get those edges make sure that gold's on there there's some little gaps in here and uh, the mop brush will get some of that so hopefully it gets it all actually okay so now what I'll do is use the mop brush Is where that luster really comes out too. And try not when you're handling the gold with the brush and the gilder's tip brush and uh, um, try not to ever touch the gold with your hand. That, 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 that's just not a good thing. It'll, uh, it'll stick to your hand probably and it'll lose some of its sheen. I'm just about done with this. Hey, Kevin, the mat you're using to cut the gold leaf, Yep. what is that made of? Is it a flexible surface? Um, it has a little give to it. Um, it's a pad, a slight give to it. It feels like it's, a, a, I think, a leather or some type of, uh, you know, leather or hide. I don't know if it's synthetic or not. All right, I'm just kind of finishing this up right here, and I'll sh show you how that looks. So there's a, a small casting that's been uh, covered with the gold leaf. And like I said, this casting was our uh, Duo Matrix Neo. So uh, it's kind of a neat thing, another material, your urethane resins and your polymer modified gypsum for your casting materials. So. Um, yeah, that, that basically covers it. Um, so, um, just one know. more one more oh, question before more question. we finish sure. up. Sure. Um, if you um, are finished, yeah. Do you have to put a protective layer on oh, this? Oh, that's a good point, and I, I forgot to mention that. Um, you can now twenty three karat gold doesn't need um, protective cover on that uh, coating. Rather, um, that can last twenty or thirty years. Um, so. If some of the other golds, you can put a coating of varnish, a shellac, or a polyurethane. Uh, some of them have an amber color, so you're going to kind of change the color of the gold a little bit. Um, if you, you can get some clear coatings, that may work also. Um, so you may want to do that. Um, you know, I, I would rather not coat it. Um, you're you're going to lose some of that luster, but it depends on different applications. So. Uh, so that basically is that. Um, that's gold leafing on castings. Uh, so wh what did we learn today? Um, what is gold leafing? Um, why would you use gold leafing? Um, the supplies that went over the brushes, the gilder's pad, the kaolin powder, the sizing. Um, they're things you really need. Uh, you need the gold, 23 karat gold we used. Um, the benefits of using black castings, as I showed you, um, brushing that sizing onto the, onto the uh, dark black castings, you can really visually see the difference. And that, that ensures that you get all that um, adhesive, that sizing coated on there. So the gold will bond to that. Release agents, don't use them if you don't have to. Uh, the work area, I mentioned vents and uh, air movement, you don't want that and clear coats as we just spoke about. So um, I want to thank you all for um, watching and participating today. And don't forget our next event will be on Skin FX on April 29th. And that's going to be with my colleague Greg. So that'll be a, a good thing to tune in for. And we're going to be announcing uh, further events on our social media uh, network, uh, email, uh, newsletters um, or on our YouTube channel. So don't forget to subscribe, sign up, and follow us. So hopefully this was helpful if you're going to do some gold leafing on your castings. And uh, I want to thank you all for joining today.
and uh, you have a great remainder of the day. Thank you.